Every day we have been talking to local leaders and experts about a variety of topics related to COVID-19 and the crisis that we find ourselves in. And joining us today is Jarrett Benya, who is not only a bar owner here locally, but also someone who has been a leader in the cocktail industry, especially in advocating for changes due to the, like I said, the crisis that we find ourselves in. First of all, thank you so much for joining us, Jared. Thank and you. Uh, before we get into your reaction about uh, the governor's orders that would reopen, uh, effectively reopen, bars partially. I want to talk to you about um, how bad the bar industry has been hit here locally, not just you personally, but citywide. Where do I begin? <laughs> um, it's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the numbers. I mean, they're expecting anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of all food and beverage industries closing. Uh, and that's a massive number. And you compound, compound that with the fact that one of every six people here in San Antonio or in the service industry. I mean, it's it's a massive blow to San Antonio based on our economy. Can you make it on 25% occupancy? No, I don't. I actually ran numbers. I, I had a pro forma that I posted on Facebook that explained how you could actually survive on a 25 or actually 30% decrease in, uh, excuse me, a 70% increase in business. And there were a number of factors that would require landlords to help out. And one big factor was actually getting rid of the eight, and a, excuse me, six and a half percent of the gross receipt tax that we pay, pay for alcohol. Right, which is the sin tax. They call it the sin tax, correct? Yeah, it's called a sin tax. Yeah, so, so I mean, do, you, do you think that's going to happen? I mean, unless we get more support from it, I mean, I don't see it happening. But once again, I'm not. I mean, yeah, right now what's happening is horrible. There are people going to be closing the doors. People aren't going to be making revenue. People aren't being able to pay their rent. I'm not concerned as much about right now. I'm concerned actually nine months from now when the uh, oil economy finally trickles down and hits the Texas market. And, and talk to us about this proposition. I mean, you've been advocating for this up in Austin. We, I haven't particularly. I've been reaching out to to local leaders. I've uh, I've had some phone calls with state represent, represent state representatives. I've talked to some other local leaders in the, the uh, beverage world, and I think we all agree this would be a huge thing that can help uh, operators because we're talking about six and a half percent off the top going back into our pockets. Uh, the number I like to throw at you is like, would you, you know, uh, this is to the comptroller to the state. I mean, would you rather have four, 14 and a half percent of only 40 percent of the business or would you rather have eight and a quarter or eight and a half percent of 60 percent of the business? And the numbers just make sense. I see you have your Still Golden hat on, which is one of the social clubs that you own. Is Still Golden going to open on Friday? No, we were actually very fortunate. We, uh, we were in the middle of an acquisition uh, with the Jefferson Bank, and we were planning to close at the end of May. So, I mean, the timing for us was great. Uh, I can't say the, the same for 90% of the people in San Antonio and that own bars and restaurants. I know the past couple of months have been incredibly difficult for bar owners across our city and across the state, across the country, really. Yeah. Um, what do you think the next few months moving forward will look like for bars? It's hard to say just with the 25 percent occupancy. I don't see how that and most people can stay open at 25 percent. And, and I understand why government Governor Abbott has done it. Um, but I just don't see financially how it's, that makes sense. And. It doesn't make sense until you get closer to the 50 percent occupancy. But even then, like my biggest fear is consumer confidence. I don't know if the consumer confidence is there that it, or people are going to come out and drink. I mean, maybe for the first few weeks, it might be a great boom. But long term, I think it's going to be tough and it's going to be it's a brave new world we're in right now. What are some of the things that, that, that you are doing or you're having people do to try to bring that consumer confidence back? Because I've heard. So many people say it's a double edged sword. I mean, we can reopen, but if people don't feel safe coming, they're not going to show up. No, they're not going to show up. You're absolutely right. Uh, what we can do to com combat that is using like plexiglass in between the bar and the customer, uh, disposable cups, you know, hand washing constantly our, our staff. And they're actually uh, uh, the Night and, bar, uh, Night and Bar Club Association here in Texas, they uh, worked with Governor uh, Abbott to actually come up with a plan on how, and along with them and some other local leaders and a TRA, which is a Texas Restaurant Association, they came up with a plan, a very comprehensive plan on how you can combat uh, COVID-19 in your workplace. And there were a number of, uh, of things that were, that are some protocols that we were trying to do. And before we leave you, uh, Jared, any final words for our viewers? Anything that you'd just like them to know before we leave you? 
just hold on tight, everybody. You know, everyone got their money from uh, the government. Just hold on tight. It's going to be a, a bumpy, you know, year. And uh, it's going to be a tough ride. But I think we're all there to support one another, at least in, our, in my industry. All right. Jared Benya joining us live. Thank you so much for your time, Jared. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jared. Bye -bye. Of course, we'll see you tonight at 9, and that'll be replayed on the Night Beat. Thank you, Jared. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, take care. We'll be right back.